Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another daily cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and sub if you like what you see and let's get right into the information today. One take and uncut. I'm going to keep this video brief, but this is full of information, guys. So must see for this one in particular. So thank you for sharing this. This is yes, we'll have some on Twitter and right here, must see and retweet. So we right here, the original video, if you do want to search this and watch this, this is an hour and 17 minutes. Glenn Beck discusses the Bitcoin cryptocurrency conspiracy XRP TV HD 2018. So feel free to check that out. Again, you can pause the screen and open up a tab and search that. But now what I want to emphasize, and basically just to provide a synopsis for this, this is extremely interesting. So as Peter even says here, you know, Hodl, hodl, hold on for dear life onto your digital assets, your cryptocurrencies, as they are assets. Do not transfer your wealth into someone else's pockets. Regulatory torture is on the cusp of end. We are bull run ready. Now, this gentleman, these two gentlemen, what I find is most interesting is they basically draw a parallel between this and the dot-com bubble, the internet market in the 90s. Pay attention. So, in the early 90s, individuals were actually making huge sums of money, massive, massive profits, buying Dell, Netscape, Microsoft, and any other smaller internet stocks. However, the institutions, the big boys, the whales completely missed out on this bull market. So, you know, potentially this could be similar to crypto, even though, you know, I might be a little more tinfoil hatty with that. But basically, let's just focus on the Internet you know, market at the time. Then, since institutions missed out in the early 90s, during 94 to 95, there was a bear market. And what was really interesting during this time is, of course, the institutions put all kinds of FUD campaigns and propaganda on the news, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and called anyone in these markets idiots. They said it was too volatile, it was risky, you're going to lose all your money, it's going to keep going down. And every retail investor, you and I, individuals, Many of them, obviously, they didn't have communities and motivational videos available such as this and information, but they were selling their stocks out of fear. It was much easier to manipulate markets. And this is a fact, guys. This is fact. Now, you can actually look up the stats, seeing that the institutional purchases bought up as much as possible. There's charts available that show institutional allocation to internet deals, and it doubled during the bear market. That's comical to me. I mean, they stole all this wealth from us. Do you see the parallels, guys? This is not conspiracy. And yes, like, seriously, wake up. If you do not see it, I don't know what to tell you, whether you believe XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, any other altcoin that has a true use case and true utility, those are what is going to thrive. This is nothing new. So keep your eyes on the prize, guys. We've been seeing, what, a two-year bear market? It's just going to keep going. It's not going to last forever. That is all I'm saying. And at the end of the day, you know, I am holding. I'm not going to tell you what to do. That's your choice. All right. So right here, Panda Ripple XRP. So we have additional news here. So with Rio Financial, after 15 years, B Post will now or not, excuse me, will not renew its contract with Western Union, the number one competitor to MoneyGram. And again, MoneyGram is in a strategic partnership with Ripple. Ripple owns what? 10% of MoneyGram overall. I mean, which, and again, their agreement expires in mid-February and will be collaborating with Ripple partner Rhea. So congrats to Rhea. The rates are slightly more competitive. Now, we're going to see more of this. This is just the beginning. Now, keep in mind with groups that, you know, might be with Swift, they have all kinds of contracts. We do not know when they're said to expire, but this will happen like a domino effect. Keep your eye on this. This is great news. All right. Lastly. I'll go over a few more. So this is shared by S. Fonitz, or S. Fonitz, and I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. So Trade Talks, innovating with fintech in the $40 trillion business of trade finance. This is huge, under the radar. And again, this fintech group is very interesting. I was just watching this whole video and basically just going through snippets I liked. And again, $40 trillion in terms of this market for trade finance alone. So for those of you that do not know, high level you know, speaking, trade finance, you know, cross-border trades, you'll finance these trades. For commodities example, you know, financing wheat, palm oil, grains, all of that, really excluding oil and gas for the most part, but these are still huge transactions, billions of trillions of dollars. Now, right now, they're dominated by large banks and multinational corporations. 1.5 trillion is estimated, you know, that's desired to be used in this market, but is not available in the market because the lenders cannot find borrowers because these transactions are too large and cannot be put through the system. Now, where SMEs, small and medium enterprises, these smaller groups, can, you know, where can they get access to the capital and trade finance? Well, right now, unfortunately, with this not level playing field, banks only want to help the big guys and companies, of course. This is a problem. We need trust. We need interoperability. We need efficiency. Now, this company, um, Triteris, or however you pronounce it, 
Um, they're going over it in the video anyways. It's not even relevant with this fintech company, but what they're solving is, yeah, right here in, in this video, Triteras or Triteras, whatever you want to say. But anyways, this fintech platform is utilizing blockchain. They built infrastructure for end-to-end -end coverage, KYC, AML, credit checks, bill of lading, you know, accountability and trust all in the supply chain. Of course, trust is one of the key elements for all trade to take place. Blockchain, what is amazing about this technology is it acts as this immutable single source of trust. Huge benefits to allow these you know, efficient transactions and eliminates fraud entirely. Blockchain will be the future. It is the future. There's billions upon billions of dollars in infrastructure being built into this. If you do not think that the means of exchanging value on the blockchain, these cryptocurrencies, these open sourced protocols are not going to be utilized to build various decentralized applications, various use cases. I do not know what to tell you. I'm going to emphasize this. Let's see what happens in the coming years because the most legitimate assets whether it is Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum and, you know, scales better, whether it is XRP, whether it is, you know, VeChain, Cardano, Link, whatever problem it can solve successfully. And there's, you know, they compete because, you know, competition is good for innovation. They will thrive. There's so much money. There's a lot of friction in the current financial system. And then once it's solving this, you know, world of finance with blockchain, it's going to go after, you know, other verticals and private and public sectors and healthcare and supply chain. This is just the beginning. Mark my words. This is not, you know, me saying this. These are people much smarter than me with years and years of experience in various industries. You have to see the trends. I'm merely putting it together and trying to explain this information to you. So again, guys, let me know if you have any questions, concerns. Hit that like button, share this video around if you found it helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.